Hello, everyone, and welcome to the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. You can find me on Ravelry as Liddy Knits 2 and on Instagram as Read Knit Run. Today is Thursday, April 11th of 2019, and this is episode 58. If you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad you found this channel. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and subscribing. So it is the Thursday after DFW Fiberfest, which was amazing. So I did not put out an episode last week because I was in Irving, Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area at the convention center, enjoying the company of hundreds, if not thousands of knitters. And it was, as always, wonderful. So if you are one of the people that I met at Fiberfest, oh my gosh, wasn't it wonderful? And I can't wait to see you next year. Yeah. And I hope I get to come back next year. If you did not watch episode 57, I did announce that I am moving out of Texas, most likely in August, to start a new job up in Washington State, in the Seattle area. So, I hope I'll be able to come down in April for DFW Fiber Fest. Time will tell. So, I will talk about... DFW Fiber Fest and all of those wonderful purchases that I made and interactions and experience more towards uh, the end of the podcast. Uh, but before I completely push off DFW Fiber Fest, let me just say I wore my Reverie shawl, I don't know, almost every day of Fiber Fest because I love this shawl. So this is one of my designs, so D Hard House Designs, the Reverie Shawl. You can see I've definitely been wearing it a lot because <laughs> this has been zipped up into my coat. And maybe I have some things that I need to fix, which is horrible. But I just need to give it a good wash and block and then weave in any strings. But not inherent of the design, just oops, I zipped it up into my coat and snagged it. But for all of you who said you loved my shawl, um, thank you so much because I love it too. And it is available on Ravelry called the Reverie Shawl. I did give away a lot of patterns over, uh, over the weekend. So those of you who came up and said you loved my shawl, thank you so much. First of all, that was really brave uh, to walk up to a random person and say, I love what you're wearing. I think that's so cool. Uh, and if you're ever feeling unsure about that, you should totally do it. Okay. Like I said, I gave away a lot of patterns this weekend because I just felt so happy about sharing that with people who really liked it. So, um, yeah. Anyway, you know who you are. I can't wait to see your reverie shawl, Lacey. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not gonna wear it right now because it's really warm today, but <laughs> it's really warm in my house. I don't know why it's so warm, but it is. Anyway, <laughs> I had lots of fun. So I'll talk more about that towards the end of the episode. So I have a couple of announcements to make in the meantime. First of all, the D Hard House Sock Cal of 2019 is coming to a close in a couple of days on April 13th. So that's a Saturday. Saturday, April 13th, end of day. 12.01 on April 14th, <laughs> the, um, the thread will close. I'm in central daylight time right now. So I will not wake up at 12.01 a.m. and close the thread. <laughs> I will close the thread on April 14th in the morning when I wake up, which it's a Saturday. So who knows when that'll be. <laughs> but 
Uh, the safe bet is to get in your finished pictures and posts on April 13th, and then that way you'll definitely get it in on time. So if you're still looking for more ways to enter and participate, check out the DeHart House podcast group on Ravelry. Uh, this is a good group to join anyway, because it's where I post show notes for the podcast and I provide links to all the things that I talk about, my projects, any other good YouTube videos or resources that I find on the internet. Uh, it's also where we host knit-alongs, such as the D Hard House Sock Cow, crochet alongs, that type of thing. And uh, I have some threads open where I ask you guys for some feedback or suggestions about what you would like to see on the podcast. So if you haven't already joined the group, go ahead and do that. There's nothing to it. You just click a button that says join and then you're in <laughs> uh, and then you get access to all the goodies. Uh, the second announcement I have is about the Patricia Socks. The Patricia Socks were released on March 20th this year. And what I like to do when I release a new pattern is to mark it at a discount for the first month of release. So the Patricia Socks are still 20% off and they will be through end of day on April 20th. April 20th. So April... 20th at midnight, I guess, uh, central daylight time, uh, that discount will be finished and they'll go full price. So, uh, get your copy now while it's still on discount. That 20% off, uh, discount, uh, does not require a coupon code. It is automatically, automatically applied to to everyone who purchases the pattern in that first month of release. So when you put the pattern in the cart uh, and you go to pay for the pattern, that's when you'll see the discount applied. So you don't have to type in a code or anything. Everyone gets the discount. Um, yeah, so the Patricia socks I designed for my mother and I wanted to name them after her so that's what we did and it it was really nice because okay I've already given her the socks and it is well before Mother's Day but if you're thinking of something to to make for your mother my mother loves those socks like so much and she no she's so nice. She would love anything that I made for her, to be honest, <laughs> because she's a wonderful mother and very supportive of everything that I do, including my crafts. Um, but she genuinely likes the yarn that I used and the pattern that I made. And so anyway, it's, um, it's not a terrible present for a mother. So... With Mother's Day coming up in May, which is only a month away, now I got to do something else. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, the 20% off on the Patricia socks is going to expire soon, end of day, April 20th. So if you were considering buying that pattern, buy it now while it's on discount. So let's talk about things that I've been working on. It has been two weeks since my last yarn confession. So let's start with finished objects. I finished another shawl design. <laughs> I did. This is my New Horizons shawl. And it is knit with two colors. I used a tonal gray and then this gorgeous colorful yarn. And it has been washed and blocked. And boy, does blocking make a big difference. But I have not um, weaved in any of the ends. So please excuse my ends. <laughs> Uh, I need to weave those in, finish weaving them in, and then take photographs. So, yes, this is the New Horizon shawl by myself, and it's just a play of color between the gray and the wonderful colorful skein, 
and it's a triangle shawl. Okay. <laughs> it's like a, you know, you start at the top here in the middle and work your way out. And it's, it's big, which is what I love in shawls. So it makes it really easy to wear. And so it's just, it's really fun and appropriate for spring in my opinion because it is very colorful and coming out of the gray winter and transitioning into the bright colorful spring. It just um, really makes me think of that. So yep, I love it. It's got a slip stitch pattern and some lace and lots of garter. So it's a pretty, um, it's pretty, would I say it's beginner friendly? I'd say it's pretty beginner friendly. I'd say beginner, I'd say a beginner could knit this. Anyway, yes, yeah, so I just need to um, finalize this and then this pattern shall be released in the near future. So I knit this, like I said, out of two colors. The gray is, what is the gray? Oh yes, Knit Picks Hawthorne in the, oh, what was the color my name? It's a gray color. Found the tags. <laughs> So, so the gray is Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering in the Slate Kettle Dye colorway. And the colorful skein is Western Sky Knits in the Bella colorway, which is so awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, it's a really fun knit. And I'm really excited to get that pattern out to you guys soon. So my next finished object is a pair of socks, and these are the socks for the D Hard House Sock Knit Along of 2019. So I did finally finish the pair, and spoilers, they're on my new sock blockers that I bought at Fiberfest, um, which I absolutely love. But yes, I finished the pair. They're completely um, bound off and ready to go into Michael's sock drawer. So I knit these for my husband. And the black yarn is Premier Serenity Sock Weight in the black colorway. And this gray color is Patton's Croy in the gray marl colorway. And I love them! So... We did stripes in the ribbing, and we did a short row heel, and then we did some cool gradient stripes on the toe. And I think these are going to be a really nice pair of socks for Michael to, uh, to have in his wardrobe. So, yep, completely finished and super awesome. So I do have a half finished object. So I've moved into works in progress now. <laughs> I have a half finished object. I did finish one sock for myself and it is a shorty sock. I've decided I really like the short shorty socks that I knit myself, is it two years ago now? I don't even know, but I have them here in this bag. <laughs> so I brought uh, this project with me to Fiberfest because I wasn't doing anything fancy with the design, just completely vanilla stockinette stitch. Um, the short row heel that I like to do and the standard toe that I like to do that I have completely memorized, so it was really easy to multitask on. So I had knit myself a shorty pair of socks, I think it was two years ago. Uh, and this was out of Yarn Cafe Creations, and I don't know if she's still making these colorways, but I think this main color is called Ocean Mist, something with the ocean, and then the um, coordinating mini 
was like pumpkin, I think, but it matches the orange speckles in here. Um, so yeah, and I just look, I wear these, um, not like every day, but I wear them a decent amount. Look at how nice they look still. Anyway, um, and there's a dog hair. <laughs> so I really like these socks. So I thought, why don't I knit some more short shorties? And so I have one sock finished. So I did, what did I do? I think 10 rounds of ribbing. And on, on the taller socks, I like to do 15 or 20 rounds of ribbing. So I only did 10 on the short shorty. And then just like an inch here before, yeah, like an inch before working the short row heel. And as you can see, I did it all in one color, no contrasting heel or toe. And so this yarn, isn't it gorgeous? This is Desert Vista Dye Works. And I thought this was a self-striping colorway. Clearly it is not. <laughs> Clearly it's not. Gorgeous though. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I have the ball right here. So even caked up. It does not look like it's going to be self-striping, right? So, <laughs> all right. But so it's Desert Vista Dye Works and they do wonderful work. But this is why I thought it was cell striping because she circled cell striping on the tag. Um, dry bones gray. And I thought it was cell striping. It is not. But I'm okay with it because it's really pretty. So uh, this is a 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. So I'm guessing this is her Viso base. Um, but yeah, uh, Desert Vista Dye Works. Uh, the dyer does a lot of movie themed skeins, movie themed colorways. If you get a chance to check out the website, you should, because you're just going to drool. Um, but yeah, I really like them. I really like them. I wear a lot of, I mean, look, it matches what I'm wearing now. I wear a lot of grays, so it'll be great. So I have one sock finished. I quite literally Kitchener stitched the toe um, this morning. I worked on this at Fiberfest. I cast on and knit the sock, and this is all I worked on while I was there. So this is all the knitting that I did at Fiberfest <laughs> was this one sock which was cool. I spent most of my time socializing. But uh, yeah, so I knit it cuffed down because that's my favorite. Twisted German cast on, 10 rows of ribbing, one inch of stockinette, short row heel, plain stockinette for the foot, and then my standard toe and I Kitchener stitch the toe closed and I can't wait to knit the second sock. Oh yeah, I should say, I should be better about this. <laughs> I need to take better notes. Um, so I told you the yarn, I told you the pattern somewhat. I used a U.S. size zero needle to knit this sock and I usually use a U.S. size one, but for this short shorty, I used a U.S. size zero. In fact, I used my nine inch circular and I got a much tighter gauge that I really like. So I thought I'll also do a U.S. size zero needle for this sock, but I didn't use the nine inch circular. I used um, the, I think I have a 40 inch cable and I used, I knit this magic loop style. So the gauge is not as tight as this other sock. Oh, definitely not. But then I haven't washed these yet. So the yarn might bloom a little depending. Okay, but um, so I think I'm going to pull out my nine inch circular needle again, my US size zero nine inch circular that I knit these socks on. And I think I'm going to give it another go because I really like the fabric that it makes. So this was close, but not 
exactly the same as the other sock. Uh, but that's okay. I still love them. So my other work in progress is my Brick Sweater by Claire Lee, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I have finished the body and started a sleeve, which is awesome. <laughs> so I got all this progress done last week before I left for Fiberfest. Um, and I haven't picked it back up since, but now that I'm touching it, I probably will. <laughs> uh, but yes, I bound off the body and I used a new bind off that I have never used before. And that is the tu tubular, tubular bind off. Yes. Oh my gosh. Was that fun? It was actually, Okay. It's a little time consuming, but bind offs kind of are. But yes, I love the way it looks. It's, I don't know that it's, would it be more stretchy if I had bound off in pattern? Probably. But I don't know that I need that. So it's okay. Anyway, with the tubular bind off, you get this glorious edge where it looks like your stitches run over the edge and just continue. Just super clever and amazing. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how well you can see that in this video, but you see those ridges, they just carry right over which is so cool. It's just so cool. Uh, yeah, so I tried something new and I'm really proud of myself and I love it. So the stitch marker hanging right here on the front is where I was last time I showed this to you. So I did do four inches of ribbing at the bottom <laughs> before I bound off and, uh, I've picked up the sleeve this is my um, waist yarn right here. And I like to leave that in until I get pretty far on my sleeve. Just in case I don't like the sleeve shaping and I need to rip back and start over. Then I pretty much have this lifeline already in here. So uh, this won't come out until I'm either completely finished with the sleeve or almost finished. Uh, in which case I will then pick up the next sleeve. And then, yes, this collar will be picked up and there will be some ribbing knit here and I'll probably do the tubular bind off here as well as on the end of the sleeves. That way it looks like a nice finished uh, garment. And I'm so excited. <laughs> so, like I said, this is the brick pattern by Claire Lee and it is free on Ravelry. It is a worsted weight sweater pattern and I've knit a few worsted weight sweaters now and I do really like them because they move along pretty quickly being a thicker weight of yarn. I am using US size 6 needles which is I believe what the pattern calls for. And the yarn that I'm using is, uh, I had the label right here. Oh goodness, really? yarn is yarn B soft and sleek and the color that I am using is written somewhere here it is tobacco number 210 and it's so pretty it's like this gold brown 
color. You can see more of the, it on the shelf over here, and I just love it. Um, mm, yep. And it's very soft, and it's wonderful. Um, this yarn is 100%. They call it low pill acrylic. I have no idea what that means. I don't know what kind of treatment or chemical or whatever they use to make it low pill. But that's what the label says. So, yes, there is no wool in this sweater, which is fine with me. Um, I don't have a problem using acrylic yarns. And I'm looking forward to knitting on this sweater. However, yesterday and the day before, it was 94 degrees Fahrenheit in Texas in April, early April. So I'm not super mo motivated to work on sweaters right now. Today, at least it's, it was 65 degrees Fahrenheit last time I checked the thermometer, but which is a little bit better for sweater knitting. But yeah, it's, it's spring because it's doing the really hot and then kind of cool back and forth weather so it's definitely spring here and the grass is all greened up and the trees are blossoming and it's beautiful but it, it, it does make it very hard to dress uh, for the weather on the way out because you kind of have to plan for everything it might rain it might not it might be cold it might be hot i don't know anyway um so I really want to finish the sweaters that I have on the needles. Michael sweater didn't see any work at all over these last two weeks. I do really want to finish them, especially before we move in August. Uh, but I'm just not motivated right now because of the weather. So it'll happen. I just don't know when. <laughs> so my last work in progress I'm going to show you is a new cast on since last episode. Uh, two weeks ago, and it's another shawl design that I'm working on. I'm very inspired right now to design shawls. So this is my progress so far. It's another slip stitch shawl, <laughs> and I just love it. Isn't it one? Okay. I have quite a few purple shawls. I'm sorry, but it's a fun color, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess I'm drawn to purples and grays and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm just playing around with different um, slip stitch techniques. And I've got a little bit of garter stitch in there as well. I am only using two colors of yarn for this shawl. I really like how these two colors are playing together with each other. So I'll just show you a little close up here. Right, we've got this nice speckle tonal type of yarn and then this very solid rich purple. So the yarns that I'm using are here they are balled up. I, of course, don't have the labels in here. Uh, but this purple does not come in. It looks blue on my screen. So I'll probably put in a video or something. But the purple is Cascade Heritage. And the speckle is... It's a hand-dyed yarn that I got from a yarn club. And I know the word lucky is in the name, but I can't remember if it was lucky seven or lucky 13. Yay for finding labels. <laughs> so the solid purple is Cascade Yarns. Uh, so it's a superwash merino nylon blend. And the color is 5633. Come on. There we go, 5633 is the color. And the speckle yarn is uh, is an made by an indie dyer, so Lucky 13 Fibers. Come on. Well, you can see it there, Lucky 13 Fibers. And this color, so here's her 
Um, I assume her. That's horrible of me. So Lucky 13 Fibers. I'm sorry. I don't know if you're a man or a woman. Okay. But there's the um, contact information for the shop. There we go. So Lucky 13 Fibers on Instagram as well as on Etsy. And then the color is purple gray speckled, which pretty much sums it up. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got this yarn. Um, I was subscribed to Yarn Box to their sock yarn subscription. And unfortunately, they don't do that anymore. Um, but I did get this yarn from there and I really love it. And I had been saving it for, you know, the perfect project as we usually do. And I think it works so well with that solid. So, yep, I love this project. <laughs> I think it's going to look really nice when it's all finished. It's obviously nowhere near finished. It's still in progress. So, um, what I'm doing is writing up the pattern while I knit it and that seems to be a lot easier than writing it after I knit it. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm still brainstorming names for this shawl. I have a couple in mind, but I haven't quite settled on one yet, which I think is appropriate because I haven't finished it yet. So it hasn't completely come to fruition, so I shouldn't name it until I'm ready to. But I love it. It's really cool. Um, I'm using US size 4 needles. They're on my Chow Goose. Um, you guys remember when I crunched a knitting needle in my recliner chair? Yep, crunched this one a little bit too. I don't know if you can tell, it's got a little bit of a bend in it. Just a little bit. <sighs> but yeah. Oh, crud. Okay, it still works because it's mostly straight. <sighs> that chair is going to destroy all my needles. <laughs> Whatever. I just need, I need to be more careful. I need to be more careful. Okay, so that covers knitting projects. What I want to talk about now is a little bit of spinning. Because I did a little bit of spinning. So I brought with me to Fiberfest my Turkish drop spindle. And I keep my Turkish drop spindle in one of these um, flat sacks. And I keep the fiber in here as well. And that way I can knit spin on the go and I can take this with me. So I have been spinning this gray merino since last year's DFW Fiber Fest um, in 2018. I purchased this Turkish drop spindle from Jerry Brock Woodworks who does absolutely fine woodworking. And this drop spindle has served me well over this past year. I have not used it as much as I've been wanting to. So uh, I brought this with me. Uh, there is a cob of yarn on here, so you can't fully see the design, but I bought one of her moon phases, Turkish drop spindles. It's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. So she has a lot of different, oh, there's my eyeball right through there. Uh, awkward. So she has obviously other designs with um, birds. And since this fiber fest is held in Texas, she has some uh, long horns. I, does she have an armadillo one? I don't. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, so she offers different varieties, but the moon phases called to me. Uh, the turtle, the turtle one also called to me, but moon phases won out overall. 
I did get her larger drop spindle. She does make smaller ones. She also makes cell phone holders, like um, stands to hold your cell phone on your desk or tablet or whatever. Beautiful woodworking. Love it. Anyway, so the fiber is mohair and I purchased this from mohair and more and they're out of New Waverly Texas and their fiber is it's not only wonderful but it's reasonably priced like amazingly reasonably priced so yeah I totally got some more this year <laughs> but anyway I brought this with me to Fiberfest because I like to do a little bit of drop spindling while I'm hanging out and people watching and taking in all of the sights. So some people did stop and stare at me while I was doing the drop spindling, which was totally cool, by the way. <laughs> um, I am not an expert, but I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. So they were watching me spin on the drop spindle and I had so much fun fun. So Jerry Brock last year did a great demonstration on how to chain ply on the fly. <laughs> so all of this yarn on here is already plied, which means, so I do the single strand and when I get enough single strand, I ply it and wrap it on the cob. And so when I'm finished with this bit of fiber and I take these arms out, this ball will be ready to go, ready to knit, already plied, which totally drew me in to buying the Turkish spindle in the first place. So good job, Jerry. Keep it up. <laughs> um, anyway, so I did successfully spin one ounce of this fiber already uh, within this past year. And I did it on the Turkish drop spindle. I did this ply on the fly method and washed it and did everything that you're supposed to with it. And it looks awesome. Okay, guys, I am not an expert spinner and look how awesome that looks. Yeah, I'm super happy. So this is, I've shown this to you before, I believe. Um, so what I'm doing is I bought... I bought four ounces total in 2018 from Mohair and More, and this is one ounce, and I'm working on the second ounce, and I, basically I've just split the Mohair up. Merino, it's Merino. <laughs> I split the Merino up into um, one ounce bundles, and then that way my Turkish spindle doesn't get... Um, too weighed down and too massive. So yeah, I'm excited. So I'm almost finished with this ounce. I literally have this much left to spin up and then I'll be finished with this, with this one ounce. So I'm setting a goal for myself to finish this by, when should I finish this by? Today's the 11th. How about... How much is here? <laughs> Let me get realistic about this goal. By end of the month. By the end of the month. Okay? I'm giving myself until... How many how many days in April? Are there 31? Whatever. Um, till the end of April. I gotta finish this out. I think I can do it. So then... So I told you guys about more fiber, which I'll show you later. Okay? Um... I did not stop by Jerry Brock's booth because I was afraid she was going to talk me into buying more stuff because she's a really good saleswoman. Um, <laughs> but I have some other fiber in my stash um, that I bought even before this, uh, which is Malabrigo Noob in the... What colorway is this? It'll come to me. I don't know. It'll come to me. Anyway, it's Malabrigo Noob, which is just Merino. Okay. And I had done this on a top whorl drop spindle that I made myself. And I used the Turkish drop spindle to chain ply it. <laughs> and this turned out really well also. 
So with the chain plying, you keep, it's really easy to keep the colors um, with themselves. So the blue got plied with blue and the orange got plied with orange and whatnot. So um, there's no like barber pulling going on. Anyway, so I did this um, sometime last year as well. So I come back from Fiber Fest and I show Michael some of the fiber that I bought. And I go to sit down and knit and he's like, why don't you get out your spinning wheel? Uh, yeah, I'm going to get out my spinning wheel. <laughs> so I haven't mastered the spinning wheel yet. It is different than a drop spindle. So I do have my yarn ties in here, which are white white and red. That is not yarn that I made. Those are just ties. So I did more of this Malabrigo Noob, which I'm using as my practice fiber. <laughs> and I used my spinning wheel and I just did a traditional two ply. And it's not the best. <laughs> it's definitely not the best. Okay, so, um, so it's not amazing, but it's also not the worst thing in the world. I did experience the yarn breaking on me quite a few times, and part of the reason was because I hadn't gotten the tension just right on my spinning wheel with the correct draw, um, and... So it was, it was pulling in a lot more than I wanted it to. And so I hadn't gotten enough twist in the fiber and I'm drafting back and then the thing pulls and it breaks. So I had to keep adjusting that and uh, making sure I'm putting enough twist in the fiber. There's quite a few strands here where the fiber got very little twist put into it. <laughs> um, so I still need to keep practicing, but... I'm, I really enjoyed it. I felt like I was starting to understand my wheel a lot better and I was starting to understand the process a lot better. So yeah, this isn't the prettiest yarn and I don't know that I'll ever make something out of it, but I'm going to show you the first yarn I made with my drop spindle. Ignore the fact that it's not even skeined up. Okay, but yeah, it's not pretty. It's not, I mean, the twist is, look at this. There's like no twist there. <laughs> it's just fluffy fiber. So this is, this was the quality you could expect from me on a drop spindle when I first started out. Um, and it's like crazy blue on the screen, but it's not the best. And look what I'm doing now with a drop spindle. Like, whoa. It actually looks like yarn. So the fact that this looks like this is okay. Because you know what? I'm only going to get better. So I teach for a living and I teach math for a living. So this feeling right here of, oh my gosh, I'm still not good at it. I understand. I've understood that for years. I get it. I know what that feels like. It's perseverance that's going to get you through it. And I have the motivation to persevere because I really want to make my own yarn. Um, so I'm not worried. And um, ooh, what if I made little Christmas ornaments out of this? They would be so unique and something that doesn't have to last forever. That's a good idea. <laughs> so I can still use it, you guys. <laughs> Maybe not this. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've only spun with Merino so far, 100% Merino. And that's okay, because I'm still getting used to everything. But I did buy some different types of fiber this year, because I want to explore more of those those things and also um I don't just want everything that I own to be made out of merino and merino nylon I do want to try other things so I'm branching out or at least trying to 
I forgot to mention the spinning wheel that I have is an Ashford traditional and I totally bought it used at a flea market and the the lady I purchased it from knew nothing about it so it came with I believe four bobbins and it needed some repairs in fact the the wheel itself um, I can see it's 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 over there um, the wheel itself is made with in I think it's quarters looks like quarters um, sections of wood and some of those seams are starting to come apart a little bit so I anticipate in the future maybe several years down the road needing to do something about that but for now and especially for my first wheel ever and having paid only a hundred dollars I'm really happy with it <laughs> so yes it's awesome now it's time to talk about my haul from DFW Fiberfest 2019. So since I ended off on spinning, I'll start here with spinning fiber. <laughs> um, I did buy a couple different types of fiber. I stopped by mohair and more again. And I bought, first of all, it's vacuum sealed. <laughs> I have two. Okay, I have a whole pound right here and then this little um, extra four ounces. Uh, genius. Okay, I love it. So this is Blue Face Luster Oatmeal Wool Top. And I know it's in the vacuum seal. I'm not going to take it out. Um, in fact, I'm going to, I think I probably won't spin this until after we move. I mean, it's already packaged for me to move. Um, but they call this an oatmeal color and I'm not sure if that's like a standard thing, but it looks like, I mean, it's not a solid gray. It's not a solid gray. So it's gorgeous. Anyway. Uh, so the plan is to spin this into a sweater for Michael. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, so Michael threw that out, I think, as a joke. But I think he was kind of serious about it. He's like, that would be so cool if you spun the yarn and then knit with the yarn and made me a sweater. And I said, challenge accepted, sir. So, so that's part of the reason I'm practicing spinning on the wheel. Because no way am I going to do that with a drop spindle in any reasonable amount of time. Um, so once I feel like I know what I'm doing with spinning, then I'll think about opening this up. But um, yeah, so Blue Face Luster, BFL, I'm excited. The other fiber that I picked up, and I wasn't going to pick up even more fiber, but what do you, do you see these colors? I mean, it's green and gray and brown and it just screams nature to me. It just screams nature and I love it. So this is from A Thing for a String. And they had hand dyed fiber and hand spun yarn. So they had taken their dyed fiber and spun a whole bunch of skeins of yarn. And they had that for sale. And it was beautiful. Just beautiful. So I picked up the fiber. So again, a thing for string, which is such a cute name. <laughs> And this is 70% gray merino, 30% tussa silk. It's nice. And the color is greenscape. Yeah. Yep. And this is approximately four ounces. So I don't know if I'm going to drop spindle or spinning wheel. 
but at some point, yes, and it's beautiful. I just love it. And then there was yarn, and there was yarn, and there was yarn. <laughs> so, uh, first booth, so some of the girls in my knitting group um, make a plan, and some of us don't. Well, they said first booth to hit is mustache yarn, because everyone loves mustache yarn. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to beeline for mustache yarn and I'm going to look at all the pretty self-striping yarn. So I got three skeins. <laughs> now I went straight to her, um, the sale rack where she has her, she's got them labeled on here as mill ends. Um, so this right here says it's a partial skein maybe it'll show up. Anyway, it says at the bottom here, partial skein. And they all say that. So all three of these are partial skeins. So this one is 64 grams, 64 grams, and 46 grams. I'm making short shorties and other socks that are not super tall, and I don't need all 100 grams. So I got partial skeins. So this color, first of all, was the first one that drew me into her booth and the name here is handwritten at the top of that label uh, there we go La Bete? I don't know I'm probably not anyway gorgeous so the colors here first of all I'm a blue and gold girl that is my jam okay and then there's also green in there so I went to school at Northern Michigan University and their colors are green and gold Montana State University and their colors are blue and gold so this was like my college colors in a skein of yarn <laughs> uh, but it was so pretty so I'm excited to knit this up uh, if I remember correctly the stripes are of equal width on this one and then I saw boho. Um, and now on here it says boho, but on the other rack, these were labeled bohemian. But still, okay. And I don't believe these were equal size stripes, which is so cool about mustache yarn is that they play around with these super long sequences of color stripes and uneven stripes, and they just... They're beautiful and just wonderful. Anyway, so I love these colors. Again, it's those, it's like I'm really drawn to these autumnal colors. And I absolutely am drawn to autumnal colors. So this last one here is called, yep, the knitting needles that no one knows how to pronounce, including myself. <laughs> so, not even gonna try, <laughs> but, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so I will say I bought some of mustache yarn at DFW Fiber Fest 2018 and I did not knit any of it up this last year so I need to remedy that I need to I bought my very first year of going I think I went yeah I went in 2017 didn't I because this was my third Fiber Fest I swear I can do math <laughs> I think I only got one skein my first year, and that was Princess Leia, or just Leia. And I knit myself a pair of socks, and I have a lot left over, so I'll probably knit more and make short shorties out of them. Uh, and then in 2018, I bought three more, and I think they were all... Nope, two of them were Star Wars. I got Boba Fett and... Um, CPO, and then um, apple picking, which is a rainbow one. And then this year I got three more. <laughs> so, um, and the ones I got last year were also mill ends, which was really cool. So, yep, I just need to get on that and knit up all the self-striping socks. Okay, then there's some yarn dyers that I've purchased yarn from before that I had to go back to. Again, mustache was one of those. The other one is my girl Robin, 
at Teeny Button Studio, who does amazing work. Amazing. And she has a podcast called Cherry Pearls, Cherry Pearls Podcast. And if you don't watch it, you should, because she and her mother are so adorable. <laughs> um, anyway, Teeny Button Studio. And she got this cute little fox on here. And they're from New Orleans. So they came over from New Orleans. And I bought Death Day Party. <laughs> So it's got like this um, light blue and this gorgeous brown, is that brown? It's like a purpley brown and some green and some gray. And she had a shop sample with this knit up in a shawl and it was so pretty. So this came home with me. And then the other dyer that I absolutely had to go see was Gritty Knits. Gritty Knits. And this is, uh, this is Superwash Merino. This is on her Time Bomb base. Oh, there's no color number on here. Oh, okay, so I can't tell you the color because I have no idea. But it goes with Death Day Party. <laughs> so, uh, so my plan is to do something with these two. Probably another shawl design. Um, yeah. I think that'll be pretty. So there's that. And then also at Mohair and More, they sell a bunch of Malabrigo yarn, which is where I got a bunch of my Malabrigo last year. So I hit them up again. But this time I went for some more um, tonal solid colors instead of the... Um, gorgeous colors of Anniversario, which I put in my Meandering Malabrigo shawl. Meandering shawl by Stephen West, but in my pattern project library, it's called Meandering Malabrigo because I used the Malabrigo yarn. Anyway, I got these solids. And again, I'm thinking autumn. I'm thinking this rust color is gorgeous and just needed other colors to go with it for a shawl or a sweater or something so yep that's gonna be that's gonna be really pretty so this color this light color down here is called sand bank mm, here we go sand bank this middle rusty color is called Botticelli Red. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And then the dark color up here is called Eggplant. And yes, all three are on the sock base, which is 440 yards, fingering weight yarn, and it is superwash merino wool. So no blend, just superwash merino wool. Yeah, I'm excited. So last year, 2018 DFW Fiberfest, I remember going to the Stunning String Studio booth. By the way, if you make a yarn purchase from them, you get a free pattern, which is cool. Um, so Stunning String Studio, and they have that cute little label. Um, uh, yeah, it's stunning. Pretty much any solid color yarn you want, they have. I mean, it's a literal rainbow on their wall. And they have it on, you know, lace weight, fingering weight. They had some DK. They had sparkle. They had not sparkle. They had cashmere. They had not cashmere. I mean, whatever you want. And it, the rainbow was right there. So I went in. Okay, and this was after picking these up. And I was like, oh, more three solid colors. Okay. And I thought, no, 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 no. I'm going to go around the festival and I'm going to find that like single skein yarn that just calls to me. And then I'm going to come back to Stunning String and find some coordinating colors to go with it because they had almost any color imaginable there. So that's what I did. So... Um, I'm going to tell you a little story first. Uh, before I even got to the festival on Thursday, 
one of the vendors we found out had their trailer stolen with all of their goods in it before they could even set up for the festival. Yeah. Do you know how much vendors pay for a spot in this festival? And then to lose all of your inventory and not even be able to sell it and make any money at all is horrific. So, um, I don't know what day it was, but they were able to recover some of their product. Um, I'm not entirely sure on how they recovered it and how the police found it or anything because everyone was talking about it and you've all played the game of telephone. But they were able to recover some of their product and set up a makeshift booth and sell those things. Also, um, the organizers of the festival put together a fundraiser raffle and had other vendors donate prizes uh, to raise money for um, this vendor who had their goods stolen and the community chipped in. Um, they thought they were only going to have two gift baskets, but the vendors donated so much they had eight gift baskets and it was just, I mean, I'm sure it didn't make up for their losses, but the community came together and was really supportive about it. So I went to their booth straight away on was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday. They were able to set up. Anyway, a hundred ravens. A hundred ravens. We love you. Your stuff is... Oh, okay. So this, this called my name. And I knew I was going to get something from them because they, they do wonderful work and I really wanted to support them. So I picked up this game. This is 75% merino, 25% nylon. It is a fingering weight. I only bought fingering weight yarn. Um, and the color is something I don't know how to pronounce, so I'll put the label up here. I'm sure it's a reference that I just don't understand because I'm not hip and cool. But it is like plum purple light gray, charcoal gray, and then the natural color. And it's delectable. It's so pretty. So this was my one skein. My one skein of yarn that I wanted to have and wouldn't know what else to coordinate it with, except that stunning string is stunning. So I went over there and picked up this color to go with it and this color to go with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have plum pudding. We've got the hundred ravens color. And then, this one is called charcoal. Didn't I tell you plum and charcoal? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, again, it could be a three-color shawl, or I might be able to swing a sweater out of this. Who knows? But it's so pretty. <laughs> and then, I picked up a couple of mini skeins, which I immediately balled up. Uh, from Suburban Stitcher and I don't know where the tags are I probably left them at the festival <laughs> but I needed yarn to show my friend how to brioche and so I picked up a couple mini skeins uh, because I didn't have any extra yarn with me that wasn't you know skeined up and stuff so I bought a couple mini skeins from Suburban Stitcher and they're so pretty um, to show my friend how to brioche knit. So we sat in the little, um, what do they call that little seating area? Probably just the lounge area. Um, so we sat there and I taught her how to brioche knit and brioche pearl and do all of those things so that she could knit my reverie shawl, which she promptly started after getting home from Fiberfest. So yay. <laughs> um, so I have these as well. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but I have them. <laughs> I also bought some buttons. 
there was a booth there with fiber and buttons and ball winders and swifts and just like a whole lot of different things that knitters and spinners can use. And so these buttons, I did not need to dump all 12 out of this bag to show you. <laughs> um, these buttons are adorable. So they're navy blue. So I'll show you the back side. Just a, they're wood buttons and they're navy blue. And on the front, I mean, I'm going to use this side out. It has these cute little flowers on it. And they're gold. And they're so pretty. And they're so cute. <laughs> so she had like wood buttons that look like wood. They haven't been painted or stained or anything. She had these. She had uh, plastic buttons of different shapes. Uh, she had wood, um, like wood tags that say handmade and you could sew it onto the object. Um, and those were all really cute, but these buttons, they called to me. So I got some buttons, uh, which I'll use in the future, I'm sure at some point. Also from Stunning String, last year I got a shawl pin from them. This year I got another shawl pin. And this one's really cute and clever on how you pin it, um, which I'm not going to demonstrate now, but it's, uh, it's super cute once it's on the shawl. I'm sure I'll show it at some point. I'm sure I'll be wearing it. I also got some stitch markers from Stunning String, so I got some plain old um, rings to go on the needles and then the light bulb stitch markers and the light bulb stitch markers I got in rose gold and the circle stitch markers over here are in antique copper so I'm just oh yeah they look cool they look, and they come in these cute little cases there's plastic wrap around them right now but what a nice, and it's got a clear top, so you can see what's in there. Super cool. Um, again, from Stunning String. Right there. Cool. And from McKinney Knittery, which is a um, local yarn shop in McKinney, Texas. Uh, they had a booth set up there, and they had these cute little... Um, different um, tools. I got the wraps per inch tool. So there is the one inch right here to wrap the yarn in. Uh, and then the sizes listed here with how many wraps. This is the coolest thing ever. They also had a little um, one inch square cut out in the middle so you can measure your gauge. And I feel like they had something else. They had a Texas shaped needle size gauge. Is that the word? It has a different size holes punched out for you to test which size needle you have. And it's shaped like Texas. And of course on the back it says McKinney Knittery. Um, but it's got the different sizes around Texas. And some of the cities are labeled, which is cute. Uh, but I really wanted this because I don't have a wraps per inch tool. So, yay. I'm so happy. I'm really curious on whether or not these, I feel like they must be, these lines must match the um, width of the strand of yarn, right? Yeah, I would think so. I'm going to test that theory out. <laughs> I definitely have some lace weight, some fingering sport decay, and worsted that I could check. I do not have bulky, super bulky, or Aaron. But yeah, this is cool. Um, and then I also got some more knitting needles. I love my Chowgu knitting needles. So I got some more sizes that... I don't already have in my collection 
and they were about the same price as what I can get them for on Amazon. <laughs> and I could have them immediately in my hand and not have to wait. So I bought them. And, and I got those sock blockers. I got these sock blockers. Uh, so perfectly catchy designs and this business is run by a couple and the gentleman does most of the woodworking and she I went to their booth last year and I didn't actually buy sock blockers because I was running low on my budget at that point and so I made a point to go over there this time earlier in my in my rounds to check them out again and every time they tell me about how he sands down all of these edges in here so the more intricate the design the more work he has to do anyway they were mentioning that they're not going to be going to shows as much anymore and they're going to eventually just retire from the business so these sock blockers were on sale um, so these are yaks, the shape here, that does not help. Um, so the shape here is a yak, which I totally wanted like the sheep or the llama or something like that, but these were like half off and yaks are cute. And I felt yak fiber for the first time and it was crazy soft. So yeah, so I bought the yaks. And they're really, okay, get out on camera here. They're really pretty and really sturdy and well-made and I love them. So I'm excited to have them and excited to use them. Yeah, good purchase. So I didn't just buy yarn. I also bought fiber and some tools, um, which it's... I always thought it sounded kind of silly, but you should have good tools. We have good quality tools. It makes your craft more enjoyable. And honestly, it does. So uh, it's definitely hard to go out and just say, I'm going to replace everything with shiny, shiny, brand new and high quality. No, no, no. It's something we do over time. So I just bought three new needles that I didn't have sizes for. I still don't have a complete set. Um, these are sock blockers. Um, the funny thing is, is Michael's socks fit on there and they're these are a little too short, but um, these are mostly for me, for my socks, for my size. So I didn't also buy sock blockers that are his foot size, but I'm sure I'll do that later. So, um, when I go to Fiberfest, I go in with cash and um, I only spend my cash. And when I'm out of cash, I'm done and I don't go overboard. Um, and that is that. So I go in with a plan and a budget and that's what I'm allowing myself to spend uh, at that event. To, I mean, I say to spoil myself, but yeah, honestly, it is to spoil myself. Um, but... You know, I just want to throw it out there for those of you who might be looking at this like, oh my gosh, look at all of that stuff. Um, I still knit with acrylic. I still knit with cotton. I still, you know, like, it's not all fancy schmancy. Um, the yarn I used to knit these socks was purchased at a big box craft store on sale at um, Black Friday. There's nothing wrong with having a craft and being affordable about it. For me, it's the enjoyment that I get out of it. It doesn't matter about the dollar amount. Now, it matters at the bank what the dollar amount is, and I don't want to go to in debt over this craft, but um, I'm not going to look at this and go, oh my God, these socks were $4. They were $4, okay, with the yarn, if we don't count my time. <laughs> Okay. Yes, they don't have to be crazy expensive, high quality 
yarns um, that you pick up at craft shows, but sometimes it can be. So uh, just to preface that, I am not a yarn snob. Uh, I don't turn my nose up at anything. I do love all of the gorgeous things that people make. And some of the things, some of the gorgeous things that people make are hand dyed yarn. And these people are just so good with color. It's awesome. And I respect that and I want to support them. And I also want to enjoy it. So I go and I buy a little bit and I bring it home and I enjoy it. Anyway, so thank you <laughs> for, for joining me for this episode and sticking with it this long and um, recapping my fiber fest with me. I'm so excited to put all of this yarn on the shelf and add it to my collection and then pack it up later to move. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!